Hey, what's up, guys? It's Tej, and this is Dan. We're here with the Two for Tuesdays. Um, back again. Back again. Um, today we're with, it's going to be a, a little bit of a shorter episode today. Um, we're going to kind of update you. Uh, Dan kind of threw a wrench on some of the things that we've been talking about lately because of uh, because of one of the expansions that we've kind of kind of forgotten to talk about because uh, we were just kind of rolling it in with a, another major expansion. Um, but we, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of getting closer and closer to some of our Kickstarter launches that are uh, our, our Kickstarter launch schedule for the year. Um, and, uh, we're going to kind of go over that and maybe talk a little bit about, um, politics in the world of destiny or, or maybe you know, <laughs> find, <laughs> find something interesting. Uh, you know, uh, let's focus in on an area that we want to talk about. Cause we, Dan and I have actually talked a lot about the, the, the dwarven culture, in the world of destiny, and maybe we sure. can explore a little bit of that. So, um, keeping that in mind, Dan, what have you got for us on the Kickstarter launch schedule? Well, uh, so uh, for a while there, we've been kind of going back and forth as to whether we're going to try and do fairies and staves at the same time on the same campaign. But honestly, it feels like it's just uh, it's just doubling up too much unnecessarily, uh, and ends up tying the future of staves to you know the future of a Tavern Masters expansion, which of course, as much as I you know feel sure that we'll get the expansion through and get it done. Uh, you know, I feel like Staves should definitely stand kind of on its own merit. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the Staves Kickstarter first. That'll probably be launching, if we get everything together, uh, in the first part of February. Uh, and then we're going to be quickly working on getting that together and fulfilled and whatnot. I'll have all the layouts and stuff already done and all that ready to go, the files. Uh, and then uh, hopefully by April or May, if things are moving along quite swiftly on that, mm -hmm. Uh, we'll be launching the next Tavern Masters uh, Kickstarter plan, which would be for the Fairy expansion and the Tavern Signs expansion and a few other fun little odds and ends. And also, the thing that I've been keeping kind of under wraps, uh, the Tavern Masters Advanced, the Marketplace. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an expansion that basically will mm -hmm. turn whatever version of Tavern Masters you're playing into a more... It gives you more player agency, so to speak. Uh, some kind people, meta. well, some people like you know the 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 fun randomness of it because like the, the whole purpose was that it was meant to be like a business. You can control what you have in your business, mm -hmm. but you can't control who shows up exactly. to try and you know shop exactly. there. So, but you know, as as things will have it, certain gamers like certain kind of games, mm -hmm. and people like a lot more player agency from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, it, it's more important for the future expansions going forward for the two big mega expansions, which are basically going to be now called Tavern Masters Advanced Expansions, the Innkeeper and the Village. Uh, so Tavern Masters Advanced, the Marketplace, basically adds in a couple of market boards where you can go to during the day, basically... Uh, during your normal phase, when you're playing Tavern Masters, you'll have an errand action you can do every mm -hmm. phase. Day phase, night phase, and if you're playing with Dirty Deeds, during the Dirty Deed phase. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you get one errand to do, and you might go to, like, for instance, you might go to the brewery, mm -hmm. where you can purchase any drink tokens, like ale, mead, wine, rum, or brandy, mm -hmm. for two gold each. Uh, or you can also um, uh, uh, trade goods there, yeah. like, uh, yeah. basically you discard... Like bread feet. No, no, that's the marketplace. Okay, uh, the, the brewery, you can trade a, oh. a drink from your hand or your tavern to take a, a drink from a discard into your hand. Mm. Uh, hey, Matthew, how's it going? Hey, Matt. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's what you did at the brewery, you know, so that might be your action for the day. Or mm -hmm. you might go to the marketplace where you can sell goods from your tavern for one gold each, or you can buy food tokens, which would be bread, fish, and cheese. Um and uh, the market tokens come into play in the fairy expansion, too, because with the fairies, you know, they have different abilities you can play with their butt, like giving them buttons. And, uh, you know, it says stuff, for instance, like play any one fish from your hand, a discard or a market token. So that way, you know, mm -hmm. like if you're playing with the Tavern Master Advanced and you're using the fairies, it gives you more chances of getting those items out there. And you know, you don't have any more of the lock where like, oh, well, I've been playing for five rounds and I've got no ale and I've got all these ale patrons in my hand. You know, again, happened to me last like week. it's, you know, it happens in business. It's meant to like the, the, yeah. the game is meant to kind yeah. of mar mirror that in proper, you know, market. But, you know, to make it a more balanced game where you have more player agency and you can, you know, uh, hi, Samuel, we're excited about the fairies. Yes, too. we are. Too. Uh, uh, it, last week we played uh, 
Dan and I played a quick round where I got slaughtered. Uh, <laughs> so w- w- he thought it would be a good idea to talk about some of the Tavern Masters advanced stuff, like with the with the, the upcoming marketplace, the innkeeper, the village. Uh, the village one is. It, we've talked a lot about that one, and that's the one where we kind of get a little bit of in, into a, a kind of a tower defense. Yeah, uh, tower it, defense it had kind of, kind of a, 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 a like tower or city defense kind of thing. Where cool. you're, it, it, it builds on, especially builds on uh, cooperative play mm-hmm. and also builds on solo play. Oh, um, yes. And, I like to play. Uh, I, I, I've, I've been going through and playing, uh, especially with uh, the market stuff, I've been going through and playing some, working on some some uh, homebrew solo mode ro- rules and stuff like that, adding in a little bit of upkeep and stuff like that to add more of a challenge. Uh, but the village one, it, it, I also like a lot of cooperative play because we played a lot of Betrayal of House on the Hill where you can do some, do yeah, some cooperative Yeah, which is cooperative there. up until... Up and up until yes, up until up until the 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 final <laughs> the the haunting. Uh, yeah. But uh, adding we'll in the legacy, yeah, adding in that. adding in you know especially with the innkeeper where you add in adventure the uh, the traveler traveler yeah, deck. The traveler deck. So those are all these different parts that Dan has put together for all these expansions. They work really well together. And I think weren't you talking about tr- maybe trying to make the village into kind of a standalone? Well, the village may end up being a game that you could play uh, by itself. It's it's kind of back and forth. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I like Tavern Masters being very modular and build upon, and the village. You know, we're just gonna say, like it's still it's still got a lot of its mechanics being locked down. I know what mm-hmm. I want it to do, and I know the experience I want it to give at the table. Mm-hmm. But what all I end up having in there, you know, is is a matter for like for instance, it has the the event deck in there currently. Yeah. The event deck's fun, you know. You never know. Maybe, maybe you end up having a uh, famine, so you can't play food that round. Or maybe it's a wet tunic contest, so you get you know bonus gold for your wenches. You know. Yeah. Uh, there's there's all that. The the, the event used to be its own thing, but uh, it just fit really well with what we were trying to do with the village. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know it ended up there. But uh, you know, like with the, with the Tavern Masters Advanced, the marketplace, like the that will then give you the 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 token basis because then the innkeeper for ex- expansion, for instance, adds two new market boards, which is just two new locations you can visit, mm-hmm. you know, during your your actions because you get five in the base marketplace expansion, three that you can use. You know, uh, with any version, even just vanilla, just the base mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there is one board that's the back alley that you can use if you're playing with Thirty Deeds, and then there's the docks, which you can use mm-hmm. if you're playing with Dockside. Yeah, with Dockside, and uh, you know, so it, it, again, it, it's just to add player agency to kind of make the game a little bit more. Where like, oh, hey, you know, I, I can buy the tokens I want now. Of course, you know, sure, a regular ale might be one gold in your hand, mm-hmm. but. You know, two gold is a token, but it balanced right. out because hey, maybe you've got that line on some good cheap ale, you yeah, know, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, it's 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 all just to kind of add more player agency mm. for that. So. So and and then what we're we're when we're scheduling these things out, we know we're doing staves next, and then we have we're gonna have uh, somewhere in there we're gonna throw in dice armada. <laughs> then we're gonna start working on the tavern. Magazine. Actually, well, so February we're looking at doing staves. Okay. And then April or May, depending on how fast we're able to put things together, mm. we'll uh, we'll do the campaign for Fairies, Tavern Masters Advanced Marketplace, and Tavern Signs. Okay. And we'll have a few other fun things on there, too. Like, I've been itching to make those coins that have the little bottle openers as part of them. Uh, I, uh, I planned on running them during the last campaign that we planned for the, for the Merchant's Guild packs. What ended up becoming the Merchant's Guild packs. We just never got to run that campaign. Uh, so I'll be putting those in there, but I'm also looking at any suggestions for things that you guys want to see. Of course, we'll have, you know, plenty of promo cards and stuff like that too, to go with all the, the fun in there. But, you know, maybe, maybe it's time to add another shot glass because we have the, 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 the standard six shot glass set, yeah. but you know, I always intended to go back and do, you know, specialty shot glasses once in a while. Like, Oh, here's the necromancer cause it's right. Halloween or, right. you know, here's this cause it's this. Um, you know, there's a, so it, just if there's stuff you'd like to see, also, if you have any crazy ideas for, uh, for, you know, promo cards or, or fun things that you just like to see in the game, let me know. There's a lot of already developed, but that, so it might already be in there. And if not, Hey, you know, there's room for more. Yeah. 
So. And and as I forget who it was last week that was talking about specialized carrying cases. Maybe we're, we'll try to work on. I think it was, was it Matthew. I think it was Matthew uh, talking about it last week. Uh, maybe we'll see something like that this year. Uh, but then moving past uh, staves, tavern masters, dice armada, then we have Lord of the Night coming. Uh, and once we get the the office area set up over there, we're gonna we're gonna invite <coughs> a couple of people over, and we're gonna do a playthrough of uh, Lord of the Night for you guys. Probably not on a Tuesday because we yeah. both have work to do the next day, and and it does it'll, take it'll a little... be a scheduled thing. We'll certainly yeah. make, we'll put an event up and um, stuff like that. Uh, but that's gonna be that. Uh, once you guys see that, you're gonna see. Uh, a completely different type of, of game that, that Dan has put together. And you've been working, this one's on what, it's like it's 30th iteration or something yeah, yeah. like it's, that? It's like, it's, it's, okay, so like in version types, it's like version 8.65 or something <laughs> wow. like that. It's definitely like the 8th iteration of the game. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and lots of, you know, lots of updates since just the 8th one. Because, I yeah. mean, it went from... A big board game to a small board game to a card game to a board game to a dice game to a, wow, <laughs> but it, it's it's a fun tale to tell and we've got it we've got yeah. it uh, and it's a, it's just a deep, how I want. It's, a, it's a it's a it's a it's a big game and it's it, it can you can make it as competitive as you want it to be or casual as you want to be but it's still a very involved game. Uh, being new to board gaming myself when we first played it, it was a little overwhelming for me so. But now, now I have a specific strategy that I like to play. I have a certain character that I like to play, and there's and it's it's starting. Uh, I'm starting to refine my strategy with recruitments and and um, instead, enthralling. Is and, nice. and, I've always been a big fan of enthralling. See, and there you that game depending on the character that you pick, and you have a little bit of you uh, player agency where you can actually. There's a lot of player agency uh, in that game. You I mean, have it's... a lot of player agency just with your character development. You can actually develop your character and have it grow in certain areas so your your actual your strategy can actually change mid game uh based on where 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 some of your things land because then you can all of a sudden go oh instead of enthralling people i could just capture a bunch of people and have a, a herd and then just get a massive influx of of blood which you use to upgrade your character and then bing bang boom you're the most powerful vampire on the board and you're ready to go Make your make your gate roll and make your you know make your final attempt at the at the dark throne. It's it's a really cool game. Um, whenever whenever it's Dan, Robbie, and I playing, where you know uh, Dan's usually sitting over in the corner cussing because his rolls aren't going the way he wants to go. Nice and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then Robbie is doing what Robbie does, and then I'm sitting around, sitting scrambling <laughs> trying to figure out my strategy for the rest of the game. Um, but it. it even if Dan is not making the roles that he wants to, to make, he still, by sheer luck, can come through and win that game out from underneath Robbie and I, who are... I'd like to think there was a bit of skill involved, too. <laughs> a, a little bit of skill. So, <laughs> but... But looking further, further in the future from that, we Dan has some awesome, other awesome games that he's worked on that we've actually played and prototyped. Um, some that are still in early development, but one that I think is closer to being ready for a final prototype is Game Lords, which is which, it, when you when you first look at it, you're like. Huh, this is interesting. This seems kind of silly, but then once you start playing it, it <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a whole lot of fun. It's a, it's a card game, but um, if we'll you want... play that soon on on a video okay. once we get the office set cool. up for yeah. sure. So because um... I mean it it really I mean it's it's also been we've been working on that one for years and years. Uh, the old War Council I had, we played that game incessantly <laughs> uh, you know and so yeah i mean we'll, we'll get that on the table to show you guys and honestly at some point the one i really can't wait to show you my personal favorite of all my games and that's saying something oh, realms, yeah. realms of destiny that's that's the big one i've been working on for over a decade now yeah. and it's 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 it, it's, it's huge amazing and massive but like it's... it's everything i wanted talisman to be but wasn't <laughs> but it is in this and uh, I still haven't played Talisman, so yeah, I, we're gonna I, get him. We're gonna we're gonna give him the full Talisman experience soon. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Uh, but. <laughs> the, the the new fourth revised, of course, but I do actually have a full set of Talisman Third Edition. That oh cool is is a fun 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 game. I love yeah. that version too. But they did a lot of stuff with fourth revised, and uh, I mean I've done a lot of stuff. Well, like Realms of Destiny, for instance, that's the big adventure game that takes place in the world of Destiny, where Tavern Masters takes place, uh, and uh, I've already got. 
uh, five base expansions completely done, prototyped, and ready to go as well, as well as uh, there, there's four more epic expanses planned, plus oh, wow. there's three epic realm boards, I didn't know about plus that. there's a couple of other smaller expansions. Wasn't there an astral plane board? Yeah, or? that's one of the, that's one of the epic okay. realms boards. It's, cool. it's the astral plane. Cool, cool. Uh, and that's the nightmares expansion, like K-N-I-G-H-T. <laughs> that's what we call it anyway, you know, working uh. But... Uh, <laughs> I just need to start keeping a 1d4. Well, see, there, there's there's Realms damage. of Destiny, then there's the Holy War expansion, which mm -hmm. adds in the little tem mini Temple board and Darklands board. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Village, the uh, then you have the, the Northern Sea, and then the Burning South, which is all mm -hmm. desert and stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the, the Zarala Desert. And then you have the Mountains expansion mm -hmm. off to the, to the west. Right. Uh, and then on top of that, you have the... Later on, you have the city gates, which is like the the capital city of Orin. It's mm -hmm. a big expanse, just an epic expanse. Mm -hmm. Then you have the the southern forests, and then you have these like the like dark forests down below the desert. Okay. Uh, then you have the halls of the deep, which is all like kind of like underdark kind of stuff yeah. or whatever you know, yeah. like deep. And uh, and then you the the frozen north, which is like this frozen area uh, to the north of the North Sea. Uh, you have the the Land of the Dead expansion, mm. so going into the realm of death. Uh, you have the the Astral Plane expansion, and you have the the uh, the Dark Lord's Tower, which is like there was this Dark Lord who you know like builds his tower on top of Mount Destiny, and so it's like this whole tower you got to go through or whatever. Yeah. It's a fun little thing. Uh, and then there's some small ones. There's like the Harvest expansion. That'll eventually be a Christmas one. Right. But but the Harvest expansion, all the five base expansions, everything, that's all been prototype played like ad nauseum for years yeah, now. It's it. ready. It's it. just a matter of art. It's just a matter of art. Art's mm -hmm. expensive. And good art, doubly so, or mm -hmm. triply so, or more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had to get out smaller games and stuff first. And the, and and I, I love Tavern Masters. Mm -hmm. I love all my games. I mean, I think more of you need to try playing Cthulhu because... Yeah, sure. It's it might not be the same as Tower Masters, but it's fun. Right. I like it. Well, I mean, uh, basically, basically what you yeah. have what you have coming up this year is expansion on an already very well put together game in Tavern Masters, plus a showcase of of other games that Dan has put together to show how he has um, has a lot of depth. And ready, uh, you know, just just some of the things that I've seen, and some of the some of the games that he has up here that are ready to go, like Wizard Labyrinth. Well, that's uh, I mean, that's ready to go too. Oh, that, yeah, that does have a prototype. I forgot about that. Yeah, it, but working then, prototype. It works there, well. There are some that that fit in the in the other the other IP, the Stars of Destiny, that have you know, and it's a an that's our space yeah. world. It's yeah. a it's an entire universe where we where we could have you know some cyberpunk settings. We could have. You know, um, well, there is technically a cyberpunk setting too. That's where the shadow hackers, the shadow hackers, have yes. been kicking around. And that that's kind of more that's kind of more my that's kind of more my realm because I'm I'm you know like uh, every time I every time I talk to Dan, I'm always like, hey man, I've been playing some more cyberpunk 2077, and it's awesome. Cyberpunk's so, awesome. I've always loved cyberpunk, shadow run, rifts. Yeah, yeah, that's all. I'm an EDM DJ also, mm -hmm. so I mean, of course, I would like cyberpunk stuff. Um, so. Um, so we just we have we have a breadth of games that are coming out, but what and, and Dice Armada we've only briefly oh, mentioned it. But I was talking to John; he's like cool. Just talking about it a little bit more. Okay, we'll 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 we've got some more stuff to do before we really want to show a ton to you guys. But it's our first space game, mm -hmm. and it's a it's a game by a friend of mine named John Latch, mm -hmm. and uh, he's been in the gaming community for years, decades, and he's been making games for decades too. He just uh, we're gonna get this one put out, and it's it's so cool. And, yeah. and basically, you're rolling up your ships every every game, and then you're fighting with your ship dice, and and it's just a fun little game. But like he and I have been working on it, and we've been expanding some ideas and stuff too. And we're gonna have a lot more to show you on that. Super yeah. fun little idea. Oh yeah, it's uh, I actually took a copy of it with me to to my day job, and the guys in the shop on their lunch break they'll play it. And they're actually trying to figure out a way that they can use it to gamble, which that's not really what it's about. Like, yeah, you can put twenty dollars down and say I'm going to beat you, but it, 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 there's there's so there's a little bit of an aspect of luck in it, and uh, that's just the way those guys in the shop operate, though. But it, you know, a normal game take uh, once you get the rules down and once you get the cadence of the game going, you can actually uh, you can probably actually finish a game ten, fifteen, maybe twenty minutes. Depending uh, on how many people are playing, yeah, like, if it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, you're looking ten to twenty, uh, ten, 10 anywhere, fifteen, 10 minutes, to fifteen that, minutes, yeah. 
if you had it was made as a dual game eventually yeah uh, but and, then i i was looking at it and worked up ways to where you could play it multiple players and mm -hmm. come up with some expansion stuff too so it's stuff that john and i are going to get worked out mm -hmm. and i'm going to I just need more time to be able to get with him and show him some ideas and for us to, you know, get it all together. We've already got a lot of the art done. The art mm. is looking great. Yeah, the art's by Aaron, awesome. The guy that did the art for Staves for us. And it's, uh, excuse me, sorry, I got a, a dinner kind of. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but no, it's, it's uh, I can't wait. I, I love space stuff too. So mm. getting us to finally start putting out some of our stuff in space. Mm. Like, there's some other space games that I can't wait to put out and show you guys. I've, I've got... Some of them prototyped and some of them working on like Space Escape. Mm, yeah. Space Escape. I got. I got to talk yeah, go about for it. Go for it. Go for it. It's, 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 one a, of my it's a card ideas. game. It's got like some boards and stuff too. Probably we haven't finalized the pieces, you know. But uh, basically, we've laid a prototype of the game itself. Uh, and so basically, everybody starts out. You were all members of. Uh, you were all prisoners on the prison ship Tartarus uh, that crashed on this like junkyard planet uh, out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, so you have, each player has a hidden agenda card of, of like who they were in the prison. There's also a traitor kind of card in that there is a security officer that survived. So you might end up the security officer or you might be the android or you might be the, uh, the virus, the, the interstellar virus. Uh, <laughs> so there's some fun extra cards as far as hidden agenda. But basically like you start out and you see some ships and some parts in the junkyard. And everyone kind of has to search around and use their skills to put some junkers together and be able to fly off of them. And of course, depending on the, uh, the, the, the type of ship and the size of ship, you might not have enough for everybody. You might have to work on a couple of ships or whatever. So that's just the first phase of the game, getting yep. off the planet mm -hmm. and getting off the planet before the hunter drones show up to try and find you and bring you back to the prison system or whatever. To, mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, then it's the race to planets because part of your hidden agenda is that you have a certain way of finding sanctuary. So maybe you were some disgraced mob boss or whatever who got taken out by his opponent, you know, like by some other rival in the gang. So you got to be able to go back and fight your way to the top, but then you mm -hmm. can provide sanctuary for you and your crew. Or maybe you just happen to be the son of like some internet intergalactic senator kind of guy or whatever. And so you can get yourself off, and but you can't provide sanctuary for anybody else. So you might be bluffing and be like, hey... If we get to my home planet, I could provide sanctuary for everybody, but really you're just trying to get on, you know, get obvious. So, so there's that whole thing, trying to get to sanctuary and avoid the hunter drones and stuff. And then, of course, depending on what kind of sanctuary you find, you might have to fight for it or go fly a couple mm -hmm. of places. Mm -hmm. Dan's uh, real big on making multi-phase games where you, you work to attain a certain goal and then you watch... Once you attain that goal, you have a secondary or tertiary goal that you have to complete. So, well, like, you know, three acts plays, you know, yeah. like, good stories are told in acts, you know, <laughs> right. and, and I, I like these right. bigger games as stories, you know, the smaller stuff. Right. You know, it's, it's meant to have a small narrative, of course, but like a more localized narrative. Mm. And then the bigger games, mm. Realms of Destiny, Lord of the Night, mm. you know, the Space Escape, all these different things, they're... The, you know, they're a bigger narrative of, you know, weeks and months or whatever. Like right. that Scavenger of the Wastes, my, my post-apocalyptic one. I can't wait to finally make that one. Oh, man, <laughs> where you could start your own, like, gang or, you know, like, start your own new civilization, all kinds of stuff. Hmm. But I digress. Uh, so that's just some of the stuff we got in the works. So as, as it stands right now, we're looking at Staves is coming... Beginning of Feb beginning mid of February. Uh, Hopefully, yeah, around the beginning of February. Okay. Um, at the beginning of February, uh, we actually had our first opportunity to play a game with how, who was it? it? Was me, you, uh, Jared, Robbie, and Caitlin and Crystal. So there were six. No, Crystal didn't play on that one. The first one, and then she had to duck. duck yeah, out we, the we played a six-player game, and it was. It was awesome. So, you know, two people. You oh, know, with the fairies and stuff, yeah. Yeah, you actually. No, no, no. With or, uh, staves. Oh, staves, yeah. And staves. We got to those six staves real quick. And at the beginning of the game, I was actually leading. And then once we flipped over our client cards, I ended up being next to last. So, and then we actually played a six player game of uh, Tavern Masters with fairies. And that was awesome. We had this entire table covered in cards. And uh, we were yelling and screaming at each other with the... Uh, I had to get a couple of extra yeah, buttons. We actually got more buttons in. Uh, we were yelling and screaming at each other. And 
you know, I, I played a tavern a tavern sign that allowed me to play any Dirty Deeds. My favorite thing is just to play Dirty Deeds on everybody. Just Dirty Deeds, just because if you know if you're not if you're not first, you're last, and trying to get everybody else <laughs> messed up is one of my is one of my things. And I played a tavern sign that allowed me to play Dirty Deeds without actually having the Asian in there. So as soon as I started, and then I played something, uh, played a card that allowed me to draw an extra or two extra Dirty Deeds every round. And then I was getting Dirty Deeds cards to draw more Dirty Deeds. So I just had like. My entire hand was dirty deeds, and then right in the last round of the game, when I knew that the that we were going to be hitting twenty gold, I just hit everybody on the table with dirty deeds and emptied <laughs> my hand, and it was awesome. And I still lost. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, one good dirty deeds is another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's kind of what we got coming up. Been super excited about mm-hmm. it all. Um, and, and again, we're we're still fighting to get the office all set up. But when we do, we'll finally, you know, have a nice little place to record from and set up, and it won't be this little tight on phone camera thing anymore. So <laughs> it's in the play, not the win. I no, couldn't I'm, agree I'm in it more, to win Rick. it, Rick. I'm in it to win it. <laughs> I think it's the fun of the of the the journey. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I agree yeah, with Rick. Right, right. Well, you know, well, you know, guys. Um, uh, today's National Ginger Day. Is it? It is National Ginger Day, so yay well, me. Uh, uh, yay me. Celebrate you. Man. Yeah, I'm not really a ginger, but I am a ginger. I'm like a quarter ginger or whatever. So so instead of All Souls Day, is it No Souls Day? It's No Souls Day. No Souls Day. <laughs> Uh, one of the yeah. things that one of the things that we're that we're always yelling at each other about around around the gaming table is how much of a ginger I am. Uh, I may have a ri- <laughs> thanks Matthew uh, and one, it's just one of the jokes that they have for me uh, and woe is me if my if my fiance is here because she gets on in on it and, and we take it home so <laughs> so oh hey Mary how's it going um so yeah, that's uh that's kind of where we're at today. Uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, uh, next week, I think we're gonna probably try to play a li- another game of staves and probably have Jared come over, uh, so we can so they can see the mechanics when three people are playing. Yeah. Um, and then uh, probably or maybe uh, maybe game lords or maybe game lords. Mm-hmm. Depending on how, depending on where we're at with the office. Um, and then Dan and I'll get together and we'll start working on a schedule to start showing off some of these other games that are going to be a longer play. Yeah. Um, and we'll start get, get, we'll start to get to show you basically all the stuff that's been kicking around the workshop for the past yes. 10 or so years, yes. like Wizards Labyrinth and Realms of Destiny and, and, uh, uh, Cults of the Necronomicon, uh, was originally Cults of Arkham, but someone took that name and then didn't even <laughs> use it. So <laughs> I guess I'll change it to Cults of the Necronomicon, but you know. And that uh, was actually really fun too. That I was really was. fun, and and that was that's a that's a thinky brain game. If you, it's really in de- uh, deep with the um, with the lore, uh, HP Lovecraft lore. Dan actually had to go through and do a lot of. Um, oh yeah, maybe my own maps and everything. It. Yeah, it was. I, I'm I'm somewhat of a Lovecraft scholar, mm-hmm. you know, and yes, uh, yes, since I've are. actually published things, I can I can be like, that's right, I'm an expert. <laughs> right. Deal with it. So. So we have a lot of stuff coming down the pipe. Um, just stick with us, guys. Um, I think Dan and I are going to talk about doing some kind of a contest where we can get you some some stuff or some discounts in the store, or get your get you know get your name on a card or something like that. So we're going to start talking about that kind of stuff here pretty soon. So if you are not a member of the Tavern Masters Gaming Guild, uh, get with us and we'll get you into that. Uh, Because we're going to be running a lot of those through there. Um, And, you know, if... Yes. Mary, we're looking forward to them, too. Uh, uh, I can't wait to show you guys. I think you're going to love them. Uh, We need to... to, Once we get the office set up and have a multi-camera shoot, we really need to show them... Uh, market and innkeeper because oh yeah, uh, yeah market and innkeeper are the just just adding the market it, it, it just changes the game so much that a lot of you guys it's gonna it's gonna take a moment of adjustment for you to actually to remember that you're actually playing tavern masters but now you have a lot more player choice in the way your tavern develops uh, which for somebody like me who all likes still to, thematic, yeah. Well, and for somebody like me who likes to role play as they're playing the game and start thinking about what their tavern looks like, what their normal clientele would look like, the the bartenders, servers, and everything like that, and the general aesthetic of the bar, it really helps out a whole lot because 
Uh, as we saw last week, I can go two or three rounds and not be able to play any any booze or anything like that. I can play food. So now I can take my coins and actually purchase something. You know, I have something in my hand. And I can go, oh, I have enough gold to get this. And I can play these cards. And then I never have to go back to the market unless I absolutely need to. So it, it, just, it just changes the game in such a way where everybody's going to have a much easier time developing their, their tavern into something that's going to generate the money to get the win. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, that, that for me, that, I think that's all we've got for this week. Um, if there, uh, uh, once again, guys, if you have any questions, concerns, you just want to chat with us, you can hit me up on my personal Facebook. You can hit, hit us up on the Tavern, uh, the Dan Chris Games Facebook. You can hit Dan up on his in his private messenger. Yep. Uh, and we are more than welcome to just chit chat with you, answer any questions that you have. Um, uh, send your friends to the store. We have plenty of, uh, you know, a lot of games, a lot of game developers right now and publishers are having trouble uh, because everything in China is shut down. Uh, because of the the global pandemic, and now we have the Chinese New Year going on, so a lot of people are having trouble getting games in. If you have people out there that you know are looking for something new to play, send them our way. We have plenty of stock; we're ready to go. Uh, we we were prepared for something like this to happen. So if if people are starting to get bored with what they have on their shelves, tell them about Tavern Masters. Send them our way, and we're gonna get you set up. Not only Tavern Masters, but Sixpence Bakery and uh, Cthulhu the Great Old One. Yeah, well, and of course, once we start running, uh, you know, w once we get things going with the Staves campaign, we'll be mm -hmm. running a, I'm sure we'll be running a, a, a companion sale on oh, the yeah. website and stuff. Yeah. Uh, technically, we still have the sale running from December. I haven't taken it to Oh, <laughs> well. So, hey, you know, <laughs> oh, well. So, you yeah, know. so you hear that. We still have the sale going on from December. So, if anybody wants, if you need to pick up more coins, more anything, any anything, hit the store, send the link out, share it out. Uh, let us know what you think. Let us know what you need. Uh, and in the comments, we're going to be leaving these, the, we all, as always, we leave these videos up. If there's anything that you think of that you want to see coming coming, uh, coming soon, just let let us know in the comments. Send us, shoot us a message. Whatever you need to do, and get in touch with us. We're going to help you out. Yeah. Yep. I've still got some old emails i got to go through and answer. I'm trying. I'm trying. We're just still also getting moved and unpacked and mm -hmm. everything. But uh, we're going to get this thing rolling strong. So, you know. Yeah. Finally get this company going the way, you know, I've been trying to get it going for all these years. We're going to get it going good and strong so mm -hmm. that we can start putting out more. I mean, I intend to have, you know, at least, you know, two or three new Tower Masters things out every year, like expansions yeah. and stuff, yeah. you know, not to mention all the other games we've got coming up. And one gigantic so. release a year of one gigantic awesome game. Yeah. At least. Yeah, at least. <laughs> so, you know. So so, uh, good it, things are in the works. <laughs> yeah, it's it's cold everywhere right now. So bundle up, be safe, stay warm. Um, yep, and uh, take care of yourself. Take care of everybody else, and we will see you guys next week. Indeed. All right, guys. Have a wonderful Tuesday night. <laughs> Bye.